Hello, this is Terrell Pauly, and welcome to an HL7 tutorial. This is going to be for beginners. Now, so what is HL7? So HL7 is a standard form of communication. It can be thought of as a standard form of communication for transferring electronic health information between different healthcare applications. And I always, like uh, in layman's terms, I like to think of HL7 as a, you know, it's, like, it's like, a, like a language. So uh, let's say if uh, it can be like a language. So if you are a, uh, let's say, for instance, if you had somebody who, if I spoke English and I have somebody else, a friend of mine who only spoke Spanish. Well, if I speak English to them, they're not going to understand uh, what I'm saying because they don't understand the language, the English language. Now, if I speak to them in Spanish, uh, I speak Spanish and they speak Spanish. So we're able to communicate with one another, with one another, because we both speak the same language. So it's kind of similar with HL7. It's a form of communication. So both the sending and receiving applications have to both speak, be able to uh, understand HL7. And so that's, that's, a uh, that's how uh, uh, simply you can think about one way that you can think about HL7 as, a, as, an, as an example. And uh, what you see here is a typical HL7 message, a standard default HL7 message. We will actually get into all the details about what all of the components that make up this, uh, this message. So this is a typical um, HL7 message. Now, this this training is actually going to be based on HL7 version 2.3.1 and uh so according to so and and also the um I actually got this uh this version from hl7.org which is the nonprofit organization that actually oversees the development of the HL7 standard so everything comes f that's uh comes to HL7, you know, come, comes through them, HL7.org. Now, so according to HL7.org, HL7 version 2.x is arguably the most widely implemented standard for healthcare in the world. And also, according to HL7.org, 95% of U.S. healthcare organizations use HL7 version 2.x and more than 35 countries have HL7 version 2.x implementations. So this is why I'm, I'm actually, this training is going to be based on version 2.3.1 specifically because actually it is uh, through my, uh, the the book that I actually got, just got finished reading an HL7 book uh, and that the book was actually based on version, I think it was some, uh, either version 2.3 and that one or I, b I believe based on that version so specifically so this book so this training is actually going to be based on that version so now you can actually what you're going to actually need is uh you're learning hl7 and um what you want to do is actually you want to actually uh you can download a free copy of hl7 of the hl7 specification document you know version this version that we're based on the training on, you can actually go to hl7.org and you can go here to standards. Um, when you get there, you go to standards um, uh, section at the top, you'll see, you see section one primary standards, and then you can just go down and, uh, and this is where you can actually get, get the uh, download your version of HL7 2.3.1. It'll come in a PDF. Uh, it's a pretty large document. I can actually show you So once you download your copy and it'll come in a PDF, you'll ex, you know, you'll, um, export the PDF and about seven and a half megs, you'll be able to get your copy of the HL seven specification document. It's a pretty, it's a pretty, um, uh, <laughs> it's a, a thousand pages. So it's a pretty long pretty long document so now 
Uh, and then you also have to, you can register, you, you'll have to register for free and this is free and then you'll accept the license agreement. So, and also before we get started, uh, continue on actually. So this, this information that I've actually learned here, this training, what, what it's going to be based on is actually training that, um, this is all what I learned from the book, from, from the book that I just got through reading, which is the HL seven for busy professionals. I'm actually going to link to that, to that book, uh, in the description of this video, it's actually going to be a, a affiliate link, which means that I'll earn a, um, a commission for the sale of the book at no extra cost to you. And so, but, um, this, this entire training is going to actually be based on what I learned from the book, because actually my job description is, uh, so what I do is actually, I am, of course, I'm a healthcare IT professional. If, if you, if you've been following me or my channel for some time, um, basically my expertise is in PACS, uh, DICOM, RIS, uh, workflow, uh, things of that nature. HL7, I, I've been exposed to, I, I have HL7, um, integration engineer, uh, colleagues, coworkers, but I myself don't work in the, do not, uh, work on a day by day basis with HL seven, but I decided to read this, the, the book here. And it's, it's, and actually it's a very, uh, I would actually re very much recommend the book, but let's go ahead and continue on to the, so everything that I learned is but this training is actually based from the book that I read. Okay, so first, let's um, we're going to talk about three of the more common message types that uh, that you'll see when you're actually working in HL seven or trying to work with HL seven. And from based on my experience, these are actually the the three that I've seen the most. Seen, you know, eighty you have ADTs, ORMs, and RU. So now ADTs, which stands for Admission Discharge Transfer which is a, it's a patient administration uh, messages. Anything dealing with patient administration as far as, uh, uh, you know, registering a patient, uh, making patient updates, uh, patient notification messages, uh, things of that nature. Those are for ADTs. For ORMs or orders based messages. And then you have RUs, which are results based messages such as reports, um, such as reports. Okay. So in the, uh, in this little diagram here, we have an example that, uh, let's say if you have a hospital information system, which is his, and you have a PAX, which is a, a image, uh, pretty much like an image repository. So let's say if you have, which stands for picture archiving communication system. So let's say if you have a, you have a new patient that comes into the hospital and they get registered. So they get registered. So now the, the receptionist or the, the front desk, uh, the front desk personnel who is registering the patient will enter them into the, their details into the hospital information system. They'll put in their name you know, date of birth, social security number, address, all of those uh, pertinent uh, page, uh, um, patient identifying information. And then once they hit submit and that patient has been, you know, registered, for, registered, that will trigger a ADT message to be sent out to the PACs, letting the PACs know, hey, we have a new patient that's been registered and the PACs will accept that message now. And that's number one. Then number two, let's say if an order has been requested that that patient has a, has an order to have an exam done, let's say like a CT exam examination. Well, once that order has been created in the HIS, then that order will be also be sent to PACs. So PACs is aware of that order. And then somewhere down the line doing a workflow process. Once the, after the, the, patient has actually had their exam, they've had their CT exam, the actual radiologist doctor or doctor has actually uh, dictated or 
um, transcribed the, or read the results of that uh, of, of those images and that exam, those results will be sent back from Pax to the hospital information system in form in the form of a ORU, which is a report. So this is just a just a short short um, overview of actually a uh, just a little workflow of a basic workflow of the more common message types that that you actually see. Now, if you um, I have a, actually a couple other videos that are on my channel that you can check out as far as that gives more detailed workflow of um, of uh, HL7 packs, uh, his systems, risk systems, everything like that, that you, that you can actually go take a look at and find. So in me message and these more common message types are also the, the actual um, three letter, uh, the, the three letter acronyms there, they're actually called message. They also, they are actually called message type codes. So message types and message type code. So the ADT is a message type code, RM and the RU. Those are message, message type codes. 